Over the years, there have been many devastating extinctions, with the majority of them being caused by man, and it's only natural for us to dream that these animals could still be out there somewhere. At first, it may seem naive to believe that extinct animals could still be clinging on in remote areas, but animals presumed to be extinct have randomly appeared in the past. Sometimes animals that haven't been sighted for hundreds of years are spotted thriving in an area that's untouched by humans, and possibly in one of the most famous cases. Prehistoric fish that are thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago have popped up in fish markets. In today's video, I'll be going through some of the most recent animal extinctions, and I'll be trying to rank them based on how likely it is that they're still alive. I'll be using all of the available data to judge these animals and their situations, and to start off with, we'll be taking a look at a very iconic group of mammals. The ground sloths were a very diverse group of giant mammals, with some of the largest being around the same size as modern-day elephants. Over the course of their existence, they adapted to many different ecosystems and climates, with most feeding on vegetation in forests and deserts, but some were even semi-aquatic and dived for plants on the ocean floor. Their size and giant claws gave them protection against some predators, but this wasn't enough to keep them safe from man. Like with most extinctions, there were likely many factors that led to their demise, but it's believed that human hunting and climate change played a massive role. There were around 30 living species during the late Pleistocene, but they all started disappearing around 12,000 years ago during the end Pleistocene extinction event. Some of the smaller species survived much longer by being on isolated islands, with the Caribbean ground sloths clinging on until around 5,000 years ago. This version of events is what most experts agree on, but there are some people that still believe that they could exist in South America. Now as you might have guessed from this section being this early on in the video, the evidence isn't very strong to support this theory, but at least it isn't as bad as people still believing that Megalodon is out there. One of the main arguments suggests that because so much of the Amazon rainforest is still unexplored, there could be a very small population of small ground sloths still hanging on. One of the main supporters of this theory was a conservationist called David Oren, and he collected many stories over the years from locals and workers who had seen strange beasts in the rainforest. In a lot of cases, these creatures shared traits with modern-day sloths and ground sloths, but a specimen was never found dead or alive. You could argue that the ground sloth would have to be elusive and hard to find to survive this long without detection, but it's also possible that this is just another creature that's been created by the human imagination. Since man has been on this earth, we have been creating mythical creatures which are sometimes based on early fossil discoveries, but most of these creatures remain in our imaginations. There are still many uncontacted tribes in the Amazon that could hold the answer to this mystery, but personally, I don't believe that the ground sloths could have avoided detection for this long. We would have found dead specimens or even fresh caves dug by these animals, but the only evidence for their existence so far is campfire stories told by locals and workers. Personally, I really hope that they are still out there somewhere, but it seems very unlikely and that's why the ground sloths slot in at number 5. Across the northern hemisphere, there are many subspecies and populations of brown bear, with many of them being found in North America. The largest of these subspecies is the Kodiak bear, but by far the most well-known subspecies is the grizzly bear. This bear once had a much wider range across North America, but we humans have had a massive effect on brown bear numbers over the years. Today, most of the grizzly bears are found in the northwest of North America, but they were once found much further south and inhabited parts of Mexico. The Mexican grizzly bear was once considered to be a subspecies, but is now classified as a population of the grizzly bear. But of course, it is no longer with us. They looked very similar to other grizzly bears in North America, but they were known for having a silver colour to their fur and they were slightly smaller. Like with many other grizzly bear populations, their downfall was due to the arrival of the Europeans, who hunted them relentlessly for sport and because they were a threat to livestock. By the 1930s, they were restricted to three isolated mountains, and by the 1960s, there were only thought to be around 30 individuals remaining in the wild. Despite protections being put in place, the hunting persisted, and the Mexican grizzly bear disappeared soon after this. For most people, this is the tragic end to the Mexican grizzly bear's story, but some still cling on to the hope that they're still here. 
Unlike the previous ground sloth story, the Mexican grizzly bear wasn't found in the dense, undiscovered Amazon rainforest, as instead it was found in areas that were relatively well populated. This of course means that it would be easier to spot them if they were still around, but if you believe some sources, then they have evaded us for long periods before. The last confirmed sighting of a Mexican grizzly bear was in 1964, but there are reports that another specimen was shot in 1976. This would mean that the bear avoided detection for 12 years, so it's not too crazy to suggest that there could still be some very remote populations that avoid humans at all costs. Some farmers and ranchers have claimed to have found cattle that look like they have been killed by a giant predator, but it's difficult to tell how large a predator is based on only a recent kill, and there are plenty of other predators in Mexico that can easily take down cattle. One of the only reasons that the Mexican grizzly ranks higher than the ground sloths is because it was presumed to have gone extinct more recently, and that's why I believe that it should slot in at number 4. These stories illustrate just how important it is that we find solutions to help endangered animals and the planet as a whole, and one of the ways that you can improve your problem-solving skills and possibly help in the future is to use Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual, interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Personally, one of my favorite things about Brilliant is that it helps you to build your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. Brilliant's data courses are a perfect way to start or continue learning data analysis, covering everything from basics like data visualizations to advanced topics like algorithms and regression models. Using real-world data from Airbnb, Spotify, Starbucks, and more, you'll learn to see trends, pass and visualize massive data sheets, and make better informed decisions. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash Suki, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description. Brilliant has also given you guys 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks to Brilliant for being a partner for this video, and I really recommend checking them out. Before clicking on this video, I'm sure many of you were thinking of one animal in particular, and it's an animal that's had a uniquely tragic story. The thylacine was one of the most distinctive and interesting predators in the world, and its demise was completely avoidable. Because I, and many others, have been through the thylacine story before, I'll keep it brief. But like many other animals of its era, its downfall started with the arrival of the Europeans. They were outcompeted by invasive species that were introduced by the Europeans such as cats and foxes, but they were also affected by the dingoes arrival in Australia which occurred thousands of years before the Europeans arrived. The real nail in the coffin was when the Europeans started to hunt the thylacines directly and even collected bounties on them, and once it was realised that the thylacine could completely disappear, it was too late. It's been argued that the thylacine was already on its way out before the Europeans arrived, but they definitely accelerated the process. This extinction was particularly tragic as there's really no other animal alive today that's like the thylacine, and it's an animal that's since fascinated people around the globe. This may be part of the reason why there is so much interest into whether this animal still walks this earth, and some crafty individuals have taken advantage of the fascination that some people have. There have been countless doctored clips and images where people have claimed to have seen the thylacine alive, and many of the people involved in these clips and stories are in it for the fame or the money. The mission to find the thylacine became so captivating that a 2011 film featuring a star-studded cast was made, and the plot of the film involves a mercenary sent to track down some of the last remaining thylacine. Despite all of the interest and supposed sightings, a living thylacine still hasn't been found. But this doesn't mean that this will always be the case. There is still a very small chance that they could still exist in the most remote parts of their former range. But as the years go by, a sighting becomes less and less likely. Some individuals have even offered rewards of up to $1.75 million for the capture of a live thylacine, and even with a reward this high, a living individual still hasn't been found. Even though they're probably not being found anytime soon, at least we still have footage and mummified remains of them, and this has led to some companies exploring if they can be successfully cloned. 
This story might be over, but we aren't going to stop talking about the thylacine anytime soon. And this amazing creature slots in at number three. Tigers are among the most formidable predators on this planet, but they used to be a lot more successful than they are today. They currently have a very scattered distribution, but they were once found over large parts of Asia and even parts of Europe. Over the years, a few different iconic tiger populations have gone extinct, and even though they were found in different parts of the world, they all went extinct for the same reasons. If you're a top apex predator, then it's not a good idea to target humans or livestock, as this is usually a one-way ticket to extinction. In the past, tigers were seen as a pest and a risk to human life so they were usually shot on sight, and due to the high demand for their body parts from China, they have always been poached across their range. If this wasn't bad enough, they have also been massively affected by habitat loss and fragmentation, and this was especially the case for the Javan tiger. This tiger population was generally smaller than the tigers on the Asian mainland, but it was larger than the Bali tiger and was around the same size as the Sumatran tiger. Even though it wasn't the largest of its kind, it was still a very powerful cat, and it preyed on animals as large as water buffalo. The Javan tigers battle with man really kicked off in the 1830s, as this is when the first bounties were placed on their heads. From this time onward, the population of Java grew at incredible speed, with around 28 million people living there at the start of the 20th century, increasing to 85 million by 1975. Over this time, the vast majority of the forest was cleared to make way for farmland to keep up with the giant human population, and human-tiger conflicts led to the tigers being almost completely wiped out. It wasn't only the predators that suffered, as many of the prey animals disappeared too, making it almost impossible for them to bounce back. After multiple studies in both the 80s and the 90s, no evidence of the Javan tiger was found, and they were eventually declared extinct in 2008. Despite this declaration, there are still reports every now and again, and some locals insist that they still exist. It was claimed that a female hiker was killed by a tiger in a national park in central Java, but experts were unable to confirm this, and leopards also inhabit this national park so it's very likely that it was a different big cat. There have been multiple false identifications and doctored images, but in 2019 there appeared to be a breakthrough. This was when a strange hair was discovered near the area of a suspected tiger sighting. An analysis in 2024 appeared to show a match with other Javan tiger samples. At first, it looked like there was hope that the Javan tiger could still exist and could possibly be saved, but it's now believed that the analysis was faulty and unreliable. Despite this major blow, I still believe that they could still be out there in some of the most remote areas, as there seems to be way too many unconfirmed sightings, and there seems to be more interest and stories about this tiger relative to other extinct tiger populations. For this reason, they take the second place spot, and for our final section, we'll be heading back over to North America. Unlike all of the other animals featured in this video, there's a high chance that the ivory-billed woodpecker will be rediscovered in our lifetimes, with some experts believing that it's just a matter of time. In previous videos on this topic, some people in the comments have claimed to have seen this bird themselves, but this also illustrates one of the main problems with sightings. The ivory-billed woodpecker looks similar to many other species that have pretty healthy numbers across North America, such as the beautiful pileated woodpecker. The ivory-billed woodpecker was the largest woodpecker in the US, and it was one of the largest in the world. The main reason behind this iconic bird's decline was habitat loss, and they were heavily reliant on swampland ecosystems with lots of dead trees. They would hunt for insects and insect larvae by boring into the wood and exposing their tunnels, but they would also supplement this diet with plant matter in the form of fruits and nuts. Logging decimated their population, and many of their swampland habitats were converted into farmland and settlements, and some of these birds were even hunted by collectors. One of the last confirmed sightings of this bird was back in 1944, but there was another credible sighting in Cuba in 1987. This is where many believe that it still exists, but there have been claims in recent years that they have been spotted in Louisiana. Unlike many other animals that are presumed to be extinct, it's not only one-off sightings from animal lovers that provide evidence, but experts and scientists claiming that they have credible evidence to suggest that they still exist. 
If you're watching this and you live in an area where the ivory billed woodpecker used to roam then it's always worth keeping an eye out, as you could be the person to rediscover the largest woodpecker in the US. Currently, the IUCN lists the ivory billed woodpecker as critically endangered and not extinct, which just goes to show how conflicted experts are on this topic. This is why the ivory billed woodpecker takes the top spot, and I really hope that a population can be found in the future. Of course, there are many other animals that could have made it into this video, so if you think you have some good suggestions, then let me know down in the comments below. Once again, thanks to Brilliant, you can get 20% off an annual premium subscription just by scanning the QR code or using the link in the description. That's about all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.